Hey, and welcome to Matt and Jess TV. I am Matt Roast here with Jessica Bun Bun. This is our reaction and review for the first two episodes of Under the Bridge, which is a brand new mystery show on Hulu. And just to sort of set the table here for a moment, we weren't really aware of this show until a few weeks before yeah. it actually is coming out, which is a little bit unusual for us. But we really kind of got all in in a short period of time, and we're so excited to actually check these episodes out. Yeah, this show so far in these first two episodes, I mean, they have set up a fantastic mystery. This is based on a true story. They have said that they've taken some liberties with it to change things around just a little bit, but it is based on true stories. So if you want to know what happened, it's out there. I'll give a disclaimer that I do know some of what's happened. This was a case that happened up in Canada. I'm from Canada mm -hmm. uh, during, you know, the time that I was probably about 20 years old or something like that, but I'm not going to give away spoilers into what happened how i'm approaching this show and i'll say this from the start so that people are like what what why is this dude so clueless i am yeah. intentionally trying to be clueless here because i i want to approach this show a little bit in the way that lily gladstone's character of cam is where i i want to be trying to put together the pieces of this puzzle as it comes along, just because honestly to me, that's that's more fun than trying to come into this acting like, you know, I, I know everything. But un unlike Jess, you know, I didn't grow up in Canada. I'm not that familiar with the case. So I don't really feel that much of an incentive to go and look up all this stuff now. Like, I just want to mm. be along for the ride. And yeah. I will say, I think these two episodes are really, really good. Like, I think this is one of the better shows of the year so far, mm -hmm. in my opinion, when it just comes to the, the setup of it, the characters, the uh, accuracy to me of what some of these, especially like the teenagers feel like. I was probably a couple years younger than them at the time in which this show was set, but I remember a lot of teenagers who acted like this. Like, this all feels pretty realistic and also maybe a little bit more terrifying because of that yeah and i mean like i said i was probably like maybe like 20 around that age at that time like i think it's 1997 mm -hmm. that this is going on the music and the feel and canada i mean they really hit all the marks on that the one thing i will say i am kind of surprised by is that they have so far not used that pj harvey song down by the water under the bridge <laughs> at all yet so far where that song came out like a year or two before the show was set so it still would have been really popular but they did give a really nice nod to it in a little way they had like a but one of the girls had a poster of Basketball Diaries on her wall, which was definitely the movie that brought that song onto the map, especially for me. I remember watching that movie. I was like, this song is so dope. I listened to it an unhealthy <laughs> amount of times. Well, speaking of songs, like what is funny to me is that when I heard the title Under the Bridge, I just thought of the song by Red Hot Chili Peppers. But mm -hmm. then as I started to prepare for this video, I kind of remembered, oh, yeah, there's a lyric and that's the city I live in, the city of angels. And it's just <laughs> like, okay, this is not exactly <laughs> no. set in the city of angels, probably could not work, but I still no. I still love the song. But okay, yeah. before we get into anything more here, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we are going to be here throughout all of Under the Bridge. I know these first couple of episodes are dropping today, mm -hmm. but- yep. It is looking like it's going to be a weekly rollout, so we are going to be able to actually sit back and theorize and talk about this stuff. Like, this yeah. is the sort of content that we really love to do here at the channel. Absolutely. So thanks for being with us, and let's get into it. Okay, let's just start by sort of setting the table as yeah. to who the characters are and what happened. Yes. So we have Rena, who is a young teenage girl mm -hmm. living in Victoria, British Columbia. For those who don't know, this is... You know, an island, it's a city fairly close to Vancouver, but not like super, super close. It's kind of its own community. It's really beautiful there. I've been mm -hmm. out there once and it was, it's beautiful. Yeah, I, I've never been out there. I've wanted to though. And, it, and it's presented really well through the scope of this show, but she is somebody who is clearly desperate to fit in mm -hmm. with some other teenagers. That's a lot, as a lot of young people are, but the problem here is that one of the sort of local <laughs> ringleaders here is Josephine, who lives in this, you know, foster home with a bunch of other young girls. Yep. She's very rebellious. She's very dangerous. And she's clearly has it out 
for Arena and a lot of ways, some of which we know, some of which we don't really know. Yep. And it culminates with what actually happens under the bridge or even after the bridge mm -hmm. where Rena is missing and nobody knows exactly what happened to her. Yeah, we've got a little bit of background on Rena and her family, but not everything. I mean, we've seen that she was kind of going through a little bit of a rebellious period. Her mom is very religious. Mm -hmm. She wasn't allowed to, you know, wear makeup or sort of dress up or anything like that, or really go out. And she's kind of sneaking out and shaving her legs and putting on nail polish and trying to do things, you know, that, I mean, a lot of us young teenage girls want to be able to do. And, you know, one of her first friends that she's kind of making is Josephine, who is extremely rebellious. Yeah. We know that there's a certain period of time, I think they said it's like six months or seven months, that Rena actually ended up at this Seven Oaks foster home with everybody. And we don't exactly know why or what happened. But at the time that we end up back with Rena, she's back with her family. Yeah, and so there's a lot of question marks and there's things that need to be filled in and we'll get to some more of those over the course of this video. But I think what this show has done and just a really good job of setting up is how repressed in a lot of ways Rena feels mm -hmm. where, you know, and I'm not I'm not sitting here passing judgment on anybody's religion or anything like that, but they are sort of showing the struggles of what it's like for somebody like her at her age mm -hmm. that has a very restrictive religious life that she's being told to follow. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at various points she's getting made fun of because of it. She feels like an outcast and her parents and those close to her aren't really understanding of it. They're mm -hmm. not fully supportive of it. I think they do a really good job of sort of showing the desperation of how badly Rena wants to fit in because they, because they needed to do that in order for basically anything beyond that on the show to work because we're dealing with a lot of extremes here and there's a lot of links that these characters would not go to if they weren't extremely desperate or upset in some way for sure i mean let's all be honest being a teenager sucks yes, like it, it is some of the suckiest part of life it's yeah. where you're having your first loves your first betrayals your first time yeah. your best friend lied to you like you haven't really figured out where you are or who you are i mean you're still really stuck in a lot of that plus of course you're living at home yeah. your parents have rules as well and then put her in this situation as well where there's also religious beliefs where you know she wants to celebrate her birthday but that's not something that happens in their household and you know she ends up becoming friends with Josephine and how she ends up at this foster home we don't know yet but what we do know mm -hmm. is that now that she's back with her family she is still wanting to go back to this foster home where she's made this circle of friends but for whatever reason now it's a situation where they're kind of looking at her as someone who you know you you got out of here so like yeah. you know we don't we don't want to really be friends with you anymore you were fine while you're here but now you're out so and we're still here yeah and that sort of ostracization is making rena really really upset especially from yeah. josephine who doesn't want to invite her places and then we sort of get to one of the big catalysts here is mm -hmm. where rena calls up a bunch of other kids and it's basically mm -hmm. just spreading all of this nasty stuff yep. about josephine and once again this is just basically on the cusp of pre-internet for a lot of people who sort of grew up in this time period. And this is when stuff like this would actually still happen mm -hmm. when you would have somebody being like, I really want to hurt this person. And you yep. can't go on, you know, Twitter and just blow up their spot. So you have to find some other sort of way to do it. So I pick like, up the phone. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not surprised that like, it's an awful thing that Rena did, but it's like, I'm not yeah. surprised that she did it because this is how people act in extreme situations. You're, you're really hurt and you want to find a way to strike back. And you think you're a teenager. You think, Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm not going to get caught. Even though Rena even wasn't really doing that much to even throw her voice or anything. She wasn't just being like, Hello, I have some news no. about Josephine. No, at one point she even called the boy that she likes and who's part of the group and yeah. basically said what her name is. Yeah, it's just like she did not... Sh this was all going to come back to Josephine and she was just thinking so emotionally. She was, but Josephine had also told her a story where she had run into a girl who was talking crap and she took her necklace and beat her up and then the girl invited her to a party. And so now almost the exact same thing happened. Rena 
called all these people, said all these things. And then she found out about it. Josephine found out about it and then invited her to a party, a party yeah. where she ends up showing up at this party. And it's kind of a setup where yeah. they end up chasing her under this bridge and then she goes missing. Yeah. And this is where we get into the really interesting mystery at the start, at the, at the heart of this show. What what exactly happened to her? Because yeah. we have, you know, the two, I, I guess we can call them the main characters, but it's kind of interesting. I sort of feel like a lot of people have equal screen time, but we have, you know, Rebecca, who is Riley Keough's character. Yeah, she's the writer. And then we have the cop, Cam, who's played mm -hmm. by Lily Gladstone. Mm -hmm. And both of them are sort of taking their own approaches to trying to figure out exactly what happened to her and at the end of episode two you know spoiler alert unfortunately we find out that rena is dead but yep. the way in which she died and how she's found like none of it really makes any sense no everybody's lying covering things up i mean the josephine character is very much you know she wants to be sort of part of this crime world and, yeah. you know looked at as somebody who shouldn't be messed around with somebody who's really tough and you know she's kind of bragging about killing her but it the story doesn't make an, any sense. There's parts of this crime that she doesn't know about. So when she's kind of recanting the story to the writer, Rebecca, and just being like, yeah, this is what happened. We took her under this bridge. You know, I put cigarettes out on her and then, you know, we beat her up. And then, you know, when everybody left, I followed her and pushed her over the bridge. Well, that's we know that there's other details <laughs> yeah. of that that aren't exactly true because she was also found with no pants some of her clothes were missing none of that was in josephine's story even when she saw on the news that you know rena's body was found she turned to one of her friends who seems like was probably there and was just like oh my god she's dead like like she was saying it in a way that i think she thought that rena was still alive that she yeah. was out there yeah, I, I don't think Josephine killed her. I, I, Josephine's clearly not a good person. Like no. She's doing some really horrible things, yes. but that doesn't mean that she is a murderer. I think she is obviously projecting that she wants to be really tough. She wants to be seen yeah. as somebody who is capable of murder. But I think this is where some of the big questions come in regards to this show and what really happened. And so... This is me just trying to be Cam, putting on, you know, mm -hmm. my detective all cap right. and all this other stuff. Because I'm thinking a lot in terms of, okay, so Josephine didn't seem to actually do it. You know, Cam may not be privy to all of this yet, but we know Josephine didn't really do it. You know, Dusty, one of Josephine's friends, like, it seems like she has a slightly more sympathetic side than Josephine so does. So much guilt. I mean, yeah. she's been calling the mom and breathing in the phone like she wants to say something, but can't bring herself to do it. Yeah, like, I don't think she did it either. And I think this is where it gets very complicated because... Teenagers do a lot of bad stuff and teenagers yes. together do a lot of bad stuff. Yes. Like that very, very much happens. Like, you know, I won't get into details, but when I was a teenager, something happened to me because of a bunch of teenagers who basically got together and decided that they were going to treat me horrible and just like write terrible things all over me because they, they would never have done it though. If it was a situation where they weren't all together and like that sort of group think can further people along, but there's, a difference between public humiliation or mm -hmm. just like, you know, beating somebody up and wanting to mm -hmm. hurt them. Neither of these are great, but there's a difference between that and killing people. And it's mm -hmm. just, I, as an outsider who knows nothing about the case, I have a very hard time thinking that these teenagers, any of these teenagers actually killed Rena. And it's interesting too, because on the show, they've given a little bit of information enough that we can kind of start to theorize yeah. a little bit but it sounds like there was a group of teenagers josephine them and we saw it on the video that took rena down under the bridge they said that they beat her up yeah put cigarettes out on her and we saw on the video and cam saw on the video that then they left and we saw Rena come up mm -hmm. staggering. So it feels like that part of the story is true, that she was brought under there, she was beat up. Yes. They left and and she was coming up staggering. However, they also said 
that there was another group of kids that when they went down there and they were beating her up, that Josephine had said that the more kids came because there was a lot of people that were at the party. So yeah. we had the first group of kids chasing her down under the bridge that more kids came from the from the party and they were under there as well. So but we didn't really see them leave or not leave. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, well, where were those kids then? Is that a truth or is that not a truth? Because Josephine's not being truthful about everything, some things, but not everything. I think to me, the real question just comes down to if these other kids did do something else that caused Rena to die, like, was it an accident? Because it's just, once again, to me, I have a hard time buying that these other kids who we don't really know that much about right now, that they would have a motive to really physically kill this person. But unless... why were her clothes removed then? That's, 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 that's the problem. Like, that's the part of this that doesn't make a lot of sense unless they, unless there is just this thought of, okay, we're going to really humiliate her and then something happens that's yeah, just yeah could be you know maybe it's just an accident that she died at the end of all this and they tried to find a way to just sort of dispose of the body in a really reckless way but okay to me though and this is if if detective matt is on the case like mm -hmm. i'm going to question all of these kids obviously like we spent a lot of time on them for a reason yes but we also had this interesting drop at the end of this episode that i can't shake when it comes to Rena's father and a record getting expunged. Mm -hmm. And this is not something that the show really established or talked a lot about leading up to it. Mm -mm. It makes me feel like he might have done something in the past that involves somebody else. And then when this record gets expunged, maybe there's this question of, okay, was justice really served? And mm -hmm. are there people out there who want to do something to hurt him? If you're going to hurt him, what are you going to do? You're going to, you're going to hurt his child. And if you're sort of aware of where Rena is or something else like that, like you can easily do something like this. And this would be presumably an adult, like somebody with mm -hmm. a real motive, somebody who could be premeditated, could carry a lot of this stuff out. Whereas these teenagers, yes, they could kill her, but they're mm -hmm. all, I'm not trying to paint with like the biggest brush possible, but they're very emotional. They're very impulsive. It's a very different sort of situation. Yeah, it was a big drop at the end of the episode that the father is holding this piece of paper that's like, oh, you know, whatever he did has been expunged. And but we still also don't really know how Rena ended up in foster care, right? Are these things connected or was it connected to something else? Is it connected to her meeting up with Josephine and her being more rebellious and like it just escalating to a point that she ends up leaving the house? Was she taken from the house? Did she leave on her own accord? Was she kicked out of the house? Like there's a lot of questions around that. I wonder if this is a situation where Rena was really, really acting out and there was a lot of this sort of dissent going on in the household and maybe the mother wanted her to go to foster care for a while and maybe the father was against it or there was just some sort of like mm -hmm. emotion that poured out of that that led to the father doing something really <laughs> extreme because he had no way to sort of channel whatever sort of heartbreak and pain he was going through and that's what caused it though you know it's also very well possible that that is the reason why she's in foster care because you know he had something happen to him legally and it became Maybe, a really yeah. tenuous situation when it came to keeping her. I really like the Cam character a lot yeah. and I I love how smart <laughs> she is. Like she gets this information from one of the girls, Dusty, where she's like, yeah, you know, this is what happened. And I got home, you know, at about, you know, this time, 11, you know, whatever, j just before midnight. I left at 1147. I got yeah. home before midnight. So I was allowed to get back into the foster care. And if you're not home by curfew, they don't let you in. And we see her cam go to the, go to the bridge and then speak speed all the way in the cop car all the way to the foster care where it's after midnight so she knows that dusty's lying and that that's not exactly what happened but she's so smart and i really like her character i think her character is gonna be able to figure out everything that's happening why did it take a martin scorsese movie for everybody to realize that lily gladstone is an amazing actress like incredible right like she's so good in this show like she's obviously yeah. amazing killers of the flower moon and we get nominated for an oscar for it but it just feels like there's so much depth to that character mm -hmm. and who she is and the just also the idea that she knows something is different about this case 
but she's sort of like the woman who cried wolf here because everybody just thinks, oh, you just want to leave. You just want to, you know, go and get this other job somewhere else. So why are we inclined to buy into all this? Like she's got just so many different things going on. And it's like it's it's a complexity that feels a little bit similar to what we had with Danvers and Navarro on True Detective. Mm -hmm. To me, like the number one question is obviously, you know, what happened to Rena? But then, you know, number yeah. two is you know, why was Rena away from her family for the amount of time that she was? And I mean, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, the tertiary question here is like, okay, then what's the backstory between, you know, Rebecca and Cam? How does that inform what's going on in the investigation? But yeah. at the end of the day, I also don't think that Cam, if she thinks that Rebecca's going to have information that's helpful to her, I don't think she's going to be like, well, I don't want to talk to her because, you know, we had some sort of potentially heartbreaking past. It's like, she's yeah. still going to do her job. I don't think it's really impeding that. Yeah. And I mean, the other sort of thing that's coming in here is, you know, yeah, she's getting some information from the girls, but the girls are also lying to her. So, yeah, this is what I think makes this show so interesting right now is that we've got a lot of information from very unreliable people. We've got a couple of bits of like hardcore evidence, you know, video footage yep. where Rena's body turned up, you know, clothing. There's specific things that we know but they're basically just like little dots that are sort of, and we got to figure mm -hmm. out a way to like make a picture out of this. And I'm, I'm not anywhere close to that right now. No, I mean, so far this show, like we said, we didn't know that this show was coming up until like pretty recently. Yeah. And it's so good so far. Yeah. It really, I wish that they had done more promotion on it. And I really hope that people are going to check this show out. Yeah. Because so far, so good. Yeah, it's excellent. Like, if you love mysteries, even if you don't know anything about the source material yep. like me, you're, there's still so much to enjoy here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We will be back, of course, to discuss a whole lot more about it, though. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything else we've got coming up. Also, thank you so much to our patrons for thank your support. You. It means the world. And we will see you here next time.